going on everybody <clears throat> i uh, hadn't filmed anything in a couple of days i've been kind of sick so went through christmas and uh it was fine and then the day after christmas i started feeling bad so anyway i'm tired of sitting in the house so i'm gonna get the 850 here pull it around over to the uh what i call a shop it's not much of a shop but i'm gonna start working on seeing what it's going to take to put a stereo and stuff in this thing when you get these shanks turned around we've got some jobs coming up and uh i need it ready to go but it still it still lacks a few things before it's really ready to go so um the other ones are ready except for still gotta finish the tent on that dozer we uh keep getting wind around here matter of fact i noticed that my Oh, glory over there needs replaced again it ripped so i need to do that in a little bit so one of the things i need to work on is you can see that this return to neutral light keeps coming on by itself this new joystick it's brand new but it is so messed up as far as not being set right you can put it in reverse that revert it tries to detect that it's in reverse when it's really not even it's not even in reverse yet so that's forward the neutral the whole neutral position is it ain't quite right so i want to i might have to have cl boyd come look at that i'm gonna look at it but uh and then also i noticed the float on this one's not wanting to work right there's a magnet in here i'm pretty sure that sticks that joystick to the all the way forward and it holds it and it puts it into float but i don't know i might could actually when I, mean, I get to actually running it i might get bigger you know, I might can find that out, like find that sweet spot and it'll work. But anyway, I want to start touching up in the cab. There's a lot of stuff to do in the cab. I'm wanting to get knocked out. I might, I'm debating on painting in here. I don't know. I may not, but like around the windowsill at least where it's peeling, I'd like to get it. I may just leave it green in here, but I got to pull this off and see if there's any wiring harness up here for speakers and a radio. Uh, I don't think there is unfortunately I may have to pull the whole headliner back out it's brand new headliner too I hate to I hate to mess it up but we're gonna have to figure something out because I don't know about y'all but I gotta have a stereo I like my music too much <laughs> and I know Brandon's the same way he wants when he's running he'll want a stereo so so I'm gonna pull over to the barn and start looking at that stuff and see what it's gonna take to I don't know what it's gonna take to run i mean i could put my own speakers in and run a wire to the converter and, and put a stereo in but i don't i'd like to do it as close to factory as i can i may have to order a uh, the whole harness from wherever it hooks up to to the speakers in the radio i don't know we're gonna we're gonna figure that out so, yeah that's what i'm doing all right i think that thing is a uh, torx head believe it or not i've really been cleaning on my barn but it doesn't look like it talk about a mess but it's a lot better than it was last year just been piddling with it here here and there when i get time but I'll find my torch drivers here and go try to pull that off well i got my torx bits how much you want to bet that t40 that's gone right there it's probably gonna be the one i need it's usually how it goes I don't know, we'll see. Nope. It was smaller than that. <clears throat> I'm gonna get that pulled off, see what it looks like. I don't know what this is going to consist of but i'm afraid it's going to be a lot bigger deal than i'm wanting if the wiring is not there it may be a pain but 
if it's already got it to where a wiring harness will plug right in, it may just cost a lot. It may not be that bad to do, but I bet you it won't be cheap. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see wiring for the radio. And I bet you there's no speakers in here, so. Hmm. I probably need to make some phone calls and see what I need to do here. I looked all over CNC Equipment's website, or their channel last night. I was really hoping that they had a video of putting a stereo in one. Or even a headliner so I could see without tearing mine apart and see what I'm getting into. But I didn't find one, so I don't know if they've ever messed with putting stereos in one or not. But I'm going to have to... I'm gonna have to figure something out here. I'll probably have to pull this headliner back out and I just hope I don't mess nothing up because it's brand new. That is one thing they put new in here is a good headliner at least, but I need to, I don't know, I may find some carpet or something to put around. These tinted windows will help though, keep it cool. <clears throat> well, I'll put this back together, pop this out. I called Seal Boyd and uh, I'm not sure why that stays on all the time there. Um, call Seal Boyd. They didn't really know much about these, so what I'm gonna, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to town and get a stereo ordered if they ain't got one. Just our local Western Equipment dealership. And then uh, I think I'm gonna run a power cord from the converter, probably up through this hole because I can't find where the wiring comes up to all this. I wanted to say in my 750J there was a deal on the corner back here, but it looks like everything on here is on the outside. And that may be the case. It may be on the outside of the cab. I was thinking about coming through this hole, put it in some wire loom, and then go up through the headliner and then over to it. And then I'll come from the stereo back to the speakers, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm getting myself into. But we're gonna try to figure it out. So I'm gonna run town to see about getting a stereo and some wire. Maybe get some wiring schematics on this thing. Well, I went to town. They helped me quite a bit at our local Western Equipment store. But um had to order some stuff through CL Boyd, a couple of part numbers there for an antenna kit and speaker harness. Some part numbers there if y'all are interested, but um I am gonna have to pull the headliner out of this thing. But first, I think I'd be better off go ahead and start jacking the cab up on it. I just got to pull these bolts out here. And the cab jack cylinder there. So, um, I can't remember. It's been so long since I've done this. If it comes with a rod or not. I do see another problem with this thing. The more I look into this thing, the more problems I see. Look at this. They don't even have this thing grounded good. They have. They didn't even put a nut on the ground. Oh my goodness. That's just the first of very many little issues I've found with this thing. Back of the ripper. They didn't even get the bolts tied on it. They just left them hanging out. So I gotta tighten the ripper up so it don't fall off. Kind of discouraged with some stuff, but I still think it's gonna be a good machine. I just they uh kind of half-assed some stuff, but just rushed it and forgot different little things. But I'm glad I saw that, so I'm gonna note on that. Um, I'm hoping that's where that's supposed to be grounded to, because there's two nut two bolts there. Yeah, I'm not sure. I might need to look into that. Anyway, I'm gonna try to get this cab jacked up. Go from there. I need to get the cab jacked up so I can run a power wire from the power, the power converter up into the cab. So I need access to the power converter. Here's a power converter right here. I'm hoping on the back side of that converter there's some way to tie into it to to add a hot wire, but. I'm sure there is. 
I've never done one, so we'll see how this goes. got the cab tilted up on this thing to the first stage it took me a little bit to remember how to do it and a rod that goes to it's missing which ain't no big deal i just use a breaker bar but the more i look into this thing man the more they I man they half ass some stuff and i'm not very happy um as you can see i'm glad i didn't just i'm really glad i didn't just go start running this thing air conditioner lines ain't even hooked up they're just exposed to the weather and everything else. I'm gonna have to pull a vacuum, get it all hooked up, pull a vacuum. Hope the whole system ain't trashed. They didn't put the ground nut on the ground. Um, they left all these bolts loose on the ripper. I mean, that's really unacceptable there. I'm gonna have to just double check this whole machine before I fire it up. Um, I'm not... I'm not here to bash people, but um, I'm gonna try not to bash this guy. I mean, I'm not out to bash him, but I mean, come on, guys. You want business? Do it right. That's the difference in CNC in this dealership. 100%. Everything CNC does is top notch. And if they're closer to me, that's who I would have went with. But anyway. If y'all are interested in who sold me this machine, who did this, you can you can private message me, comment, whatever, I'll get with you, but I'm not gonna bash him on YouTube. But this is just crazy. I'm very happy that I check, double checking everything before I just went to running it. The only thing I have noticed on this is they've got two condenser fans instead of three, like most of them JR military dozers got. But yeah, I'm gonna have to double check everything. Make sure every bolt's tight. I mean, here's another thing. First red flag I had when it got here was all these extra bolts that rode home with the dozer. A few washers, a few bolts. That one's been painted black, so it was on it at one time. That cat's been painted black. I don't know where them go. It's just crazy. They were they were rushing it. I mean, I'd been on their ass and chewing on them because I'd been 11 months, and he probably got mad at me for getting discouraged. But I had every right to get discouraged. I got me a free pair of DeWalt safety glasses here, Drake. This is Drake. He's helping me. He wants some safety glasses, <laughs> safety goggles. <laughs> anyway, I mean. This is nuts though that they they sent this thing out to work like this especially the ripper bolts i mean that's not that hard but while i had this cab jacked up i'm tomorrow i'll probably try to bypass that jet fuel system and get rid of that and loop that around that way i ain't got to worry about them filters on that but i got a wiring harness coming for the speakers I mean, this is loose. That's another deal that they didn't put back. This used cab is really rough. I knew that though. I will say I did get in this thing cheap enough where I can't complain too much, but uh, I'll probably be putting, putting a little money in it to make sure it's nice and ready. But anyway, I got a wiring harness coming for the stereo. I got a stereo coming. So it'll be a few days, but I'm, I'm glad I, <laughs> I'm sure glad I decided to put a stereo in it before I went to work. Cause there's no telling what I'll find when I dig into this thing. It's not, not cool, but it's immaculate as far as not ever being used. I mean, 30 hours, I'm not scared of the machine itself. I'm scared of the, how these guys put it together. I mean, they put the ripper on, they put the cab on, they did it 
probably better than I could do, but they half-assed a lot of stuff, you can tell, so. They were probably really rushed. But anyway, done bashing the guy, but I ain't trying to expose him on YouTube. But if y'all if y'all are thinking about buying a piece of machinery, I'll just say in the state of Texas, that's a JR machine, military machine, contact me first and I'll tell you who it was. And I mean, yeah, he's cheaper, but you're probably gonna have to double check your work, his work and all his hands work, so. Double check everything before you go to the field with it. Everything. I'm going to check my final drives. Make sure the oil level is right. I may just go ahead and change the oil. Engine oil is good. Coolant's a little low. That ain't a big deal. But I'll probably change the coolant out because it's been sitting for 12 years. It's probably the original coolant electrolysis is set in. So it needs to be refreshed up. So anyway, I'm going to keep digging on this and see what else I can find that's not quite right. I think I've done about all I can do to this thing this evening. I'm about to research a little on that DC converter and where to wire into it. Um, on that battery converter. It's right there. It's got some wires coming out of it. I don't know if I can tie into some of them hot wires or if I need to. I'm not sure. There's some inline fuses. I definitely want to put an inline fuse on this thing. But I'll wait on some parts to come in and do some little research. We'll get back after this. But I locked the cab up so the wind don't catch it or nothing. It's supposed to be pretty windy again tomorrow. My wife's moving some stuff around, trying to make more room out here. I'm gonna put all the toys and stuff in the other barn. Let me make a little more room. Anyway, that's all I'm gonna mess with today on this. Good morning, everyone. Today, uh, we're gonna attempt to run the power wire from the power converter on that dozer up into the cab and see what we can get done with that. Hook the American conditioner lines up. Uh, once we get everything kind of in place, once we get everything kind of in place where we can lower the cab back down, I'll have to pull a vacuum on that system and make sure there's no leaks. And just hope that everything is all right before I charge it. But I'm pretty disappointed in some of the stuff. Uh, I'm gonna go pick up Brandon and first we gotta go feed all the cows. I gotta fill this cake box up with cubes in town and we'll go feed everything. We won't bore y'all with that. We've got plenty of videos on feeding cows. It's usually the same, so. Anything exciting happens, which I hope there's not, <laughs> we'll have the camera. But. but that's the plan today. That's the goal <clears throat> is uh, piddle with this this afternoon after we get done feeding. And I don't really know how I'm going to do that yet. I'm kind of nervous about it. I don't. I just don't want to accidentally. I mean, if I'm after the converter, it shouldn't matter as long as I find a hot wire, I should be able to just tie into it, but shouldn't be an issue, but we'll see how it goes. I've never done anything quite like that off 24 volt systems. So, <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, there's several things we're gonna do to this. I'm gonna check all the final drives. I mean, the, the rate this thing's going, I mean, everything major looks okay, real major, but at this rate, I mean, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even doubt if they put final, the fluids in the final drives. Luckily, it's only backed off the trailer and moved here. That's it. So, just gotta double check everything. I don't want to have catastrophic failures right when I start this thing up. So, they're hungry. I'll be back. We're here looking at this thing over. See, what I was trying to show Brandon on this. On this, uh, so that line comes out and loops around here. I gotta take this line loose, this brazen line, and I think I gotta look at that video, that CNC video, to know where to hook it up at. But basically, all you're doing is bypassing this, you're just looping it around it to where you don't have to, because we're not gonna run jet fuel. So, you don't even have to do that, it just already fits. 
his video showed like how to do half of it, if I remember right. So I guess I can get on my phone and look it up. We need to look at that. I actually looked at just that. So we're trying to figure out exactly what they did here. We're cheating with we'll CNC here. here. I think you take this rubber line loose and put the steel braided line, this one, onto the top of this filter. We're going to see. Yeah, that's right. Which, for all we know, some young kid could come over and fill the full of fuel and uh, not, didn't know where the fuel tank was. So. I don't know. That rubber line comes out of the other side of that yes. and loops back around. Put this back in where the rubber line is. That's, that's what it is. Yeah, it's pretty simple. All right, got that turned back on. We're cheating, but we're figuring it out. <laughs> oh, it's windy. That's what I'm wondering if you can. Well, you should be, because then it would make that deal where nothing can get in and out. That may be what they did, but the video kind of cuts off, I guess, mainly because it's common sense from that point. But, being as I've never done this before, I want to make sure I got it right. Will that fit on there? Yeah, it just comes out of the other side of that, don't it? Yeah, I don't think that hurt nothing. I mean, that would keep that that deal contained if you ever wanted to yeah. place that hoses. I'm pretty sure that's all that he did. Keep grabbing the wrong side of the wrench. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that do is nothing to do. That's pretty, pretty easy. want to get that figured out because there's no reason to be set up for jet fuel if you ain't gonna run jet fuel. So. Oh, one other thing we gotta do, Brandon, we don't have to do it today, but I'm gonna drain all the antifreeze out and put fresh because it's, I don't know what they had in here that was kind of red, but I imagine it's been sitting in here for 12 years. So electrolysis has probably set in and it needs fresh. So, but they are a little low. I was just gonna add some cool guard, but I don't want to do that if it's not, if it's got some cheap stuff in it. I don't know if this is a sticker. Are they taped off something or not? Anyway, we're gonna look at this DC converter and see about wiring in a hot wire to the cab for the stereo. So this converter's right here. I guess I need to get a hold a voltmeter and just see. Well, my guitar is just one of these little wires here, and just run one up, but I don't see anything a better option anywhere. I didn't know if you I didn't know if you knew any of a better option to do. You just want to run a hot wire from that. There's some inline fuses. I would, you would, I would think that's all 12 volt right here. You could just tie in one of these with the inline. You want a fuse on that field. But see there's a little there's a little junction box. I just need to test and see if all that's 12 volt. Make sure it ain't 24 volt yeah. out of this junction box. 
It'd be easy to tie into the junction box with a little line. That's kind of a weird, do what? Weird system there on those little couplers. They're not really. They don't screw on and get tied. They're just like a on the joystick. You yeah. get one, you just do with the. I guess they snap on and off. going on everyone it's new year's day happy new year hope everybody had a very merry christmas today i got to do uh today i gotta move my dad's machine to our uh little headquarter barn i guess you can call it he's got to level a little pad for a little a building kind of like that that's coming for him out there a little office building but first we got the windows finally finished up on all the equipment they look really good but um i got to put a belly pan back up underneath this machine and uh then i can load her up cl boyd is coming on wednesday to take a peek at this we haven't got it all tidied up yet but we figured while we're at it we're gonna let them glue that window in. I may have already said this in another video, I'm not sure, but we're gonna let them glue that in and do some things to this while they're here. So I figured I better let them so I don't break it. And then we're gonna double check the double check the fluids and all on the final drive. And I wanna ask them about this green fluid and transmission and hydraulics. I know it's normally uh engine oil over there hydrostat over here but anyway uh i don't know if that's like a break-in oil that is necessary to have for the first so many hours or or what but i'm gonna ask them about that i got the truck idling over here i need to hook my truck back up to this this is my dad's truck but mine had to go to the shop get an injector put in it a while back so that's what's going on. I'm gonna get this thing moved and get a little footage today. Not a whole lot. Well, I should have known something like this would happen parking this out here. I needed the room, the cows. I just fixed this right here on both these because this is real brittle, it's getting bad. So they must have rubbed it and broke it off again, so. Doesn't look like I'm going nowhere until I finish, figure out how to fix all this real fast. I'm going to figure something out. Luckily, I think I have one of these in my truck. I usually keep some handy. But I'm not sure if it's the right size. i have to find out. The wind's blowing awfully bad today, too. My new flag is already ripped again. Dang it. I knew. I knew it was too big. I bought some of these recently though for that truck. And I just can't remember what I did with them. The search begins. Yeah, that's my uh, handy dandy window handle. Don't judge. Well, I got lucky. Extremely lucky, maybe. Well, I think that's the same size. I guess that went to that seat that I never really finished right. But we'll go see if this works. We're going to use it.
go out there. That's one of them days where you realize why you get so mad at the cattle. You cuss them so much sometimes. Because they do stupid stuff like that. Look at this. Evidence. Their hair all over this thing. They're rubbing on it. No, that's a... Uh... That's 110% my own fault. Uh, I knew parking this out here was a mistake. Was would be a, parking this out here would be a problem with the cattle rubbing on it and all. But I didn't have no room and I did it anyway. That's why I want to get. I started cutting some pipe up the other day, but I got to get these pipe corners drove, and this will all be a gravel lot soon. So when we're gonna put a driveway, probably right behind us going all the way out there to that paved road so we can pull in off that and pull in off that and make it a lot easier on us but anyway let's see if we can get this nose removed get that belly pan back on and get her loaded Dad showed up, so I'm gonna let him load this one up.
came back, it's a little easier to hook back up with this day cab than it is mine. Another topic is I bought this 80 acres here around my mom's house. Don't know if I had mentioned that in the video, but um, I plan on building a pond right here in this bottom. And then we got a lot of fencing to do. We're gonna put a new fence around this. I'm gonna build more of like a corral type fence around this where I work cattle. So lots of projects to come. I gotta level up all this down here with the dozer where the water comes through the fence from that pond. We're gonna try to sprig it all to grass in the spring. It's just gonna be another grass 80. So I think that's best for my operation right now. So that's what I'm gonna to try to do. But totally off subject, but I thought I'd kind of mention that what's to come in the spring, hopefully. All takes money. So we're hoping we can afford to do it all at one time. But the, the pond will be dug later than the rest of the work. We'll establish grass and uh, then dig the pond about a year later because I don't want the pond immediately silt up with loose soil. So that's the plan. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> Got a bunch of junk around this old wheel wheel site here. It was a water well, windmill was on it. I told dad a long time ago we need to cave that off and cover it up so the kids don't fall down in there. It's pretty dangerous. I'll show you. Deep hole. Do what? He's talked about it, but I don't know if he's gonna do it today. It's got a bunch of water in it. It's deep too. I don't know. How deep is it? I don't know. Deeper than I thought. It needs to be. 
I'm afraid one of my kids is going to fall down in that thing. That's what he's doing. He's gonna try to make room enough around that thing to cave it in. Yeah, it needs to go. I'm glad he's doing that. sure what this part of it was it doesn't i don't know how deep that is you've looked in it it's not very deep pretty big guy hi lady what you doing girl Deep, ain't it?
he got that leveled up over there he's got a little office building gonna be delivered tomorrow i think so wanted to do that my wife will be real happy that well and all is gone now and the cistern next to it's gone so used to be an old homestead here i think so anyway we're gonna hook this back together and i gotta go feed a few more cows this evening so good little short clip anyway Things gonna be crooked. It's too crooked, I think. Well, yeah, maybe not. I might can grab it. battery in that so I don't have to pull start it no more. You're good. realize I left my pickup idle in that whole time. Good thing diesel's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> 